So, so I've heard of JJ, right? And I have her, her CD. And if you don't have your her CD, you need to get that CD. Girlfriend. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. So greetings from Reverend Judy Ann. Um, she could not be with you this evening, and I got the phone call, so I get to be here with you. Reverend Judy Ann and I go back a long ways, over 20 some odd years. We've been friends. She was in Alaska. You know she's from Alaska. So am I, and that's, so that's where we met, and uh, it was on from that point forward. So I'm here this evening, glad to be with you, happy to be with you. And her topic, she said, was everything must change. How appropriate for life. How appropriate for life. But here's what's amazing. So God, there is this one life, one force, God, creating out of itself everything that we see and everything we cannot see. And from the beginning, it created change. Here's what's funny. We grow up and what do we do? Resist change. And yet the one constant is change. Here's what Ernest Holmes, who is the founder of religious science, here's what he says. He says, nature will not let us stay in any one place too long. She will let us stay just long enough to gather the experience necessary to the unfolding and advancement of the soul. Which means when God created us out of its own image and likeness, it created change so that we could unfold and advance, not so we could resist. He goes on to say, this is a wise provision for should we stay here too long, we would become too set, too rigid, too inflexible. And I'd be plumb darn bored. How about you? When we bored? He says, nature demands the change in order that we may advance. When the change comes, we should welcome it with a smile on the lips and a song in the heart and how many of us welcome it <laughs> with joy a few that's great everything <laughs> we, we're working on the everything part yeah I know I know just about everything some of us have learned to embrace change for the most part most of the time and some of us aren't even aware that we're resisting change. I love this. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm a little out of order, which is fine, but I love this, um, this quote that uh, I think it was Eckhart Tolle. Let's see. I've got a few quotes here. It must be Eckhart Tolle. He says, when you live in complete acceptance of what is, so now remember, all of life is changing. So he's talking about flowing with that, right? All right. So when you live in complete acceptance of what is, that is no need for all the drama in your life. <laughs> Nobody can even have an argument with you. All right, now who in here has never argued before? So, nobody can even have an argument with you, no matter how hard he or she tries. You cannot have an argument with a fully conscious person. Hello. An argument implies identif identification with your mind and a mental position, as well as resistance and reaction to the other person's position. He says, when you are fully conscious, you cease to be in conflict. No one who is at one with himself can even conceive of conflict, states A Course in Miracles. This refers not only to conflict with other people, but more fundamentally to conflict within you, which ceases when there is no longer any clash between the demands and expectations of your mind and what is. You see, our willingness to accept change, if we were really flowing, if when we really embody that the God that is, is our very life, and that the God that is created this thing we call change, we would not then be in conflict within ourselves, nor could we be in conflict with anybody else. Ah, so we have some work to do. Yeah, we do. We do. It's hysterical to me how we resist or don't want to accept somebody else's opinion. Hello. 
We think in our minds, even though we may not be in conflict with a person, we think in our minds that, that they're wrong, that something must be wrong with them to think this way or that way. And the idea is to, be, is to recognize that the reason we are human and how we are human is that as a human being, we have the ability to be conscious that we're conscious. That's unlike the other species on the planet. And so in this ability to be con conscious that we're conscious, that means that you become the observer to who you are as you are speaking or in relationship to another. So therefore, when someone else is speaking, it is not in your mind going, they are wrong. Oh, no, 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 let me express my opinion. Oh, no, let me change your opinion. No, that's not how it works. You see, when you are the observer of your mind and you understand that we're all evolving, the person that is speaking has an opinion. You see the opinion and say, mm, okay, I'm not sure I'm there. Let me offer something else. And if they still hold their opinion, you say, I got that. God bless you. I got you. It's fine. Okay? Right? Because remember, the infinite is infinite. So therefore, somebody else's opinion doesn't mean that it's wrong. It means it's their opinion. God is expressing through them. How dare us come in resistance to that, huh? Now, granted, if it is a child or someone that you know is about to get hit by a bus, well, you don't let somebody go get hit by a bus because they have an opinion they should walk out on the street at the time they're going to walk out on the street. We don't do that. Of course, we make sure we take care of our fellow person. But because someone has an opinion that's the opposite of yours, if you begin to argue, you can bet you're probably an ego. You see, there's nothing wrong. I know lots of people speak against ego. I'm not speaking against ego. Ego is great if it keeps you from jumping off the building and that kind of thing. But if it makes you against another person where you must argue or, over, or, or have your opinion and you're trying to change their belief, that is ego. This is why in religious science we say we embrace all religions. Because what we know is the infinite God that is expresses itself through another religion just as well as it expresses through religious science. All right? And so we, because God is infinite and knows how to create infinitely you, me, and everybody else on the planet, surely not one religion could possibly be right. Sure not one way could possibly be right. That's not, that doesn't make any sense. Okay? So the God that is... Has, has, is expressing itself, ever evolving, ever changing, and that includes through me and you. So now we must change constantly. We come to religious science and we come to different classes to grow and to change and to express and to learn not to judge somebody else's growth and expression. Yes? Okay, all right. I'm just making sure y'all awake. <laughs> So here's, so here's uh, one of the things that happened that I got to experience this particular week. I am very blessed to be over at the Rancho Church as the minister over all practitioners. And this week, we were graduating two practitioners. So the way that I do this is I create a, a sacred ceremony the night before they're going to go before the oral panels. All right? It's the last leg in becoming a practitioner. You sit before a panel, and they decide whether or not you're ready. So we do this entire ceremony, and one of the main things I charge them with is you go through this process of releasing, you do all these things in the ceremony, and then you come to be anointed. And in the anointment, I explain to them, it is tonight that you are choosing to commit to the change and become a practitioner, not waiting until the next day when somebody else decides that you're a practitioner. Hear that. They were making that commitment that night. It is now time that you let go any unforgiveness issues, anything in your past that is unlike the love that God is, you lay it down now. It's done. It's over with. And you are stepping into being a practitioner now. So I know I'm not here to induct you into being a practitioner tonight, but I am going to say to you, anything that you have in your life that looks like unforgiveness, anything that looks like unlike the love that you were born to be, and really are, it's time to lay that to rest. So, because here's the deal, forgiveness and change kind of go hand in hand. If you have not forgiven, it means you're in resistance to change. Because here's what, here's what I happen. Somebody will say, well, so-and-so did me wrong. And so blah, blah, blah. But she, and she apologized to me. But here's the thing. They go, well, she apologized. Yeah, but, ever heard that before? But, well, she shouldn't have done it. And they continue the story. Oh, that's not forgiveness. 
that saying, I forgave them in word and in heart, I'm resistance to the whole change. The person may have had a change of heart and said they're sorry and then said they're sorry, but I haven't forgiven them, really. I just told them I forgive you. But if I continue that story from that moment on to tell anybody else, that means I didn't forgive them. That means I didn't see that they had changed. Remember that what you're looking with is really who you are. If you cannot see the glory in somebody else, then you have not forgiven and you are resistant to change. Everybody changes. So whoever you had a problem with 10 years ago and they still have not forgiven you, as far as you know, because maybe you talked to them last week, right? But maybe you did. You still are back 10 years ago and have not changed your opinion about them. Who is it that hurt you five years ago that you're still carrying the story? I just want to know. Who is it that did something to you two days ago that you just told somebody about it today? It means you're still stuck. See, unforgiveness is always about being stuck. And what's amazing to me is that unforgiveness is always about you and not the other person. Always. And what cracks me up is that we would absolutely allow somebody to live in our mind day after day, year after year, by not forgiving them. I'm amazed at how we do that. Or not forgiving ourselves because of something we did a year ago to somebody else, and we haven't let it go yet. And what cracks me up is that person ain't thinking about you. <laughs> that person been going on about their lives, but we're still carrying the guilt, or we're still holding something against somebody. Our resistance to change is amazing to me. I had uh, a particular situation where my son, my youngest son, was going off to college. Because here's where change, resistance and change comes in. There is worry, doubt, fear, criticism, and judgment. And it all has to do with change. So in this case, I began to worry about my son leaving from Alaska and going to live in Florida. That's a long ways, right? And I'm thinking about it, I'm worrying, and I finally realize, what are you doing? Clearly, you're not trusting the divine process that says all things must change and grow. And so I had to really embody the fact that this young man, and he was a young man, was about to leave home and begin his life in college, that I could not go with him, and I could not continue to mother the way I had been mothering. He was changing, and I had to change, too. And then now that was five years ago, four years ago. And guess what? I found some resistance to change just yesterday. <laughs> yesterday. How many of you have gone to Popcorn Girl? Anybody, you know what that is? Really, people? One person? Oh, y'all got to go to Popcorn Girl. So <laughs> Popcorn Girl is a popcorn store. And I, they don't have this in Alaska, okay? I don't know, didn't know anything about this, but I get to Nevada, I get here, I live in Henderson, I go to Popcorn Girl, and I'm amazed because there's all different types of popcorn. But, you know, when I go in the first, second, third, fourth time, it just kind of trips me out that they have, um, what is it? I don't know, um, lemon meringue popcorn. How do you have lemon meringue popcorn? You know, or the, the bacon and cheddar popcorn. Ew! Grosses me out. They've got, I tell you, it's just, you name it, they've got it in a popcorn. So I order kettle corn, and I order caramel corn. First, second, third, fourth, fifth time. So yesterday, I walk in, going to get some popcorn. I'm with my husband, and I finally said, you know what, take a look, real look at the menu. And I'm looking, you know, they got chocolate popcorn and all the different flavors, and then they got these other ones, and I'm, my mind is freaking out, and it comes to me immediately. You don't like this. You're so used to regular popcorn. I did embrace kettle corn, and I certainly know about caramel corn. But the fact that you've got this cheddar cheese, the jalapeno, the almost, they might as well have hamburger popcorn on there because that's really how crazy some of those flavors are. Did I just say crazy? Anyway. And then they have the whole chocolate kind. And so yesterday I branched out, and I tasted white chocolate pretzel. I'm saying, <laughs> white, pre white chocolate pretzel popcorn, which I thought was good. And it actually did taste good, taste good. And then I tasted some other, which I can't even remember because it just blew my mind. My mind could not wrap 
around the fact that popcorn could be in all these different flavors and things on the planet. So, you know, when I got the call from Reverend Judy Ann last night, and she talked about this whole thing about change, I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, I can do change, absolutely. And then it hit me. Marquita, as something as small as popcorn, you resist that change. However, the counterpart would be the person who created the flavors. She was not resistant to understanding that popcorn could be gourmet in all different sorts of flavors. And she has created, and actually she has this idea of, of if you think of a flavor, you write it down and she actually creates it. It's wild. Now, I'm in resistance to the change. She completely embraced it. Who's the millionaire, moreover? You see, we talk about we want to be more prosperous, we want to be more healthy, we want to be more loving and more joyful, and yet... Our minds tend to do this limited thinking thing, and so we're not opened to change. So as the whole Spirit, the Holy Spirit, comes and gives us an idea, we immediately go, I can't do that, won't do that, because we have issues with change. We actually have a resistance. So I'm talking about it this evening because I want you to just, you don't have to do anything now, but as you go home tonight, I really would love for you to take a moment and think about where do you resist change? Because I guarantee there is something in your life where you are saying no to the whole spirit of God trying to get you to open up more, trying to get you to live more, trying to get you to be more. Because what's in you is the infiniteness of God. And God wants to express totally through and through you as your very life. So if there's anything that is lacking or in any limitation, is because we are in resistance to the divine flow that is always flowing through us saying, hear me, I'm trying to create through you. I'm trying to give you everything you want. Everything you want. But I need you to listen and I need you to open up, and I need you to embrace that your life must change. So many of us say we want something, and yet we won't change. We want our lives to be different, but we won't change. God is knocking, going, you want more? You want to have more? You must change. You must change. Where are you limiting the divine flow? Where is that in your life? We all have it somewhere. I'm asking you for the next week to contemplate. Where is it I'm limit, limiting the divine in my life? Is it because there's someone I have not forgiven? Is it because there's something in my life that I'm hiding from because I just can't bear the fact that I would actually do that and so I have not looked at it? Because here's a, another something else. There's so much in our subconscious that one needs to come up so that we can consciously look at it and then change and then shift. This is what spiritual practices are for. This is why we pray. This is why we sit in meditation in the silence, to allow the subconscious to come forward so that we may see that which we may change. This is how we become more. You know, it is wonderful for us to read and to hang out with great people, like-minded people, it's critical, it's part of our spiritual practices. And there's a time when we must, as the Bible says, you go into your closet in secret. This is for you and God, so that, and you listen. And, and so we pray, we pray with one mouth, hear that, right? We pray with one mouth, but we listen with two ears. So double, so you pray, and you double the time in listening, so that the divine can move through your heart and bring forth that which is unconscious to you into your consciousness so that you can see. Not to try to fix, but say, yes, I am willing to change. When we have a willing heart to change, God can act and does act. But you've got to step forward. Be courageous enough to say, all right, God, I'm listening. I'm ready to change. Because that is actually how we're made. We are made to change, which is why we grow from baby to adult. But what happens is when we're adult, for some reason, we decide, okay, I'm okay now. It's okay. I don't need to change. I don't need to grow so much. So we either 
grow at very small inklings because we no longer want to go in classes, we no longer want to study hard and all that, or we get it that I am here always unfolding. So yes, I'm going to read, I'm going to study, I'm gonna be in class, I'm gonna do whatever it takes to shift consciousness. All of life is about shifting your consciousness, especially when you're conscious enough to know that you're an adult, yeah? It's about shifting consciousness, about saying, yes, where must I change? Come on, God, bring it on. So the last point is to be grateful and thankful for change and then say, come on, God, bring it on. I'm ready. Now, hear this. When you do that truly from your heart, oh, watch out. <laughs> it's about to come. But you want it. You want it because that's how you grow and unfold and your life becomes more in alignment with spirit as she was singing. It's all about becoming in alignment with the divine flow that's trying to express through you. That's through change. Are you ready to change? Oh, then let's do this. Let's do this. Let's move into prayer for a moment. Mm, God is good. God is good. Hmm. So we move our attention here and now to that one power, the one life force, the one heart, the one mind that is God. That is the whole spirit of God, that which has created everything tangible and intangible, that which is limitless. God, love, it is right here, right now, fully 100%, always. It is the very life that I am. It is the very life that everyone in this room is. It is the very life of everything on the planet. There is only one life. It is my life. It is everything that God is. Hmm. And as God has made everything from itself, God has made the change. And in this moment, I absolutely declare and affirm that each and every person is changing right here, right now, for the better, for the good, because that is what God is. I'm declaring and affirming that something in the music, in the message, in being with each other this evening, something shifts in our minds this evening, something shifts in our hearts this evening, and we are more in alignment with the good that God is. We are saying yes to change. We are saying thank you to change. For we know it is through our acceptance of change, of the good that God is, that our lives get better. That the healing occurs. Healing in mind, healing in body, healing in spirit. Hmm. So we give thanks. We give thanks for this center for this spiritual home that we can come and hear different messages that we can come and study in different classes that we can come and be with like-minded people we give thanks for this spiritual center thank you god we give thanks for reverend judy ann for choosing to be that vehicle that god expresses through to create alchemy of love so that we have this place and this space to come to thank you god we give thanks for our own selves being willing to show up, to be a part of alchemy of love, be it through singing, be it through giving prayers, be it through being here to simply be a part of this service. Thank you, God. We give thanks for all the change from this moment forward, knowing that since God is always evolving, we are always evolving. And so we give thanks for the situations and the circumstances that come into our lives that we may evolve and change. And we speak a prayer within our own hearts to accept the change that comes, to accept it in divine grace, to let go of anything that is in resistance to change, but to say yes to flowing with change. And we say, yes, bring it on, God. We're ready. We're ready to change. We're ready to be more, to act more, to love more, to give more. Thank you, God, for change. Thank you, God, for a willing heart that is in this room this evening. Thank you, God, for a willing mind that says yes, knowing that as we think, and we believe, we shift in heart. 
and in beingness. Truly, God is good and is all there is. <sighs> and we breathe it in. We allow this word to seep deep within our mind and allow the power of this word to move into that divine, living, loving law that absolutely must act upon this intention and this belief to accept the good in our lives, to accept change in our lives. So we release the word in all its glory, in all its power. It is the word of God unto the law, and therefore it is fulfilled. All praises be unto God. We say thank you. And so it is. so much. Give yourselves a round of applause. It's, uh, okay. I'm going to come. Okay. All right. This evening, everyone has in their program a connection card. Reverend Judy Ann's going to want to know if you were here or not, so you're going to want to fill that out. Um, if you're new with us this evening, it has a spot on the back where, you know, if there's something you'd like us to know or a prayer request, otherwise you can just fill out your name and put that into the uh, collection basket when that comes around, the offering basket. And there's what it looks like. And I will go ahead and invite the wonderful, amazing, fantastic usher to please come forward. And we invite you this evening to take your offering and hold it close to your heart and just give it a silent prayer of your own. And 10% of our ties go back to the center's organization. And, uh, oh, 
and here's our affirmation. <laughs> it's my first time doing this. It's pretty good on the cuff, huh? All right, so say with me. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies this offering. I will give with an attitude of gratitude and expansion. Spiritual experience, you're not a natural being. Having a spiritual experience, but you're a spiritual being. Having a spiritual experience every day. Let me be spiritual. Let me be spiritual. for this evening. Mm. There's a power in the universe. There's a power in the universe. And I can use it. And I can use it. I use it for health. I use it for health. I use it for wealth. I use it for wealth. I use it to embrace change. I use it to embrace change. And therefore I grow. And therefore I grow. I glow. I glow. I go with God. I go with God. And so it is. And so it is. Woo, yes. 